Hi, I am Ronny Wechselberger and I'm a six times Guinness World Record holder in tightest parking. And today I would like to explain you something about snow chains. And by the way, this is my very own Tesla Model 3 performance, all wheel drive, 500 HP. And I will show you what it is capable of even without chains. Now I'm in the car with you and I would like to show you a very special feature about the Tesla Model 3 Performance and that is actually the track mode. So you can see here, you can adjust the track mode because the car has a front motor and a rear motor. So that means these two motors, it seems like that you can separate them. If it's really like that, we will see. But um, actually with a slider I can say rear wheel drive. With a slider I can say front wheel drive. If it's really in detail like that, we will see when we look at that little graphic here, because there we can see where the power is really transmitted. Yeah, so I put it in the, in the uh, first part of it, I've put it in the front. Yeah. So that means 100% to the front. Let's see what the individual tire supply is. So as you can see, it's going on all four tires. So that means it's all wheel drive. It's not 100% to the front, that means it's not a front wheel drive. So now we do it to 50-50. Let's see what happens. Aha, the rear tires are spinning more. So that means it is already transferring power to the rear and a little bit to the front. 100% to the rear. Yeah. And still, when the car comes into a dynamic situation, it gets support from the front. So it's not always said that you are 100% in the rear situation. So it is more a torque vectoring. So that means you can define how much you try to put to the rear or you raise the probability that a lot is going to the rear or a lot is going to the front. Yeah? That is actually what the system can do. The car is at least trying to deliver force to the front or to the rear depending on the slider. So in the moment we are in rear wheel drive. So let's see, ah yeah. So it's possible to drift the car. Yeah, so it's complete counter steering on acceleration. I have to catch the car, you can say, or the rear. So now we change it completely to the front. Let's see what happens. I'm steering into the corner. The car is washing out to the front. And now last check we do it into the center and have a look what it's doing now yeah, now it's neutral yeah, the whole system also the car behaves quite neutral so i can keep it with a quite straight slightly closing steering wheel um, stable in a drift so that is one of the reasons why i bought the car because I like the way it is able to give the driver the choice. Yeah? In too many cases, driver has, have no, drivers have no choices about these kind of adjustments. And because it's electric, because it has two engines, one in the front, one in the rear, all this is possible. Today, we wanna to talk about snow chains when to put them and where to put them. I would decide in the Tesla, it's a, a four-wheel drive car in that case, I would decide to anyway put it on the front. If the traction is too bad, maybe put also two each side on the rear so that we have all four tires um, with best tractions. When is the right moment to actually put them on? When you look at the surface, deep snow, 
of course could be one argument or when you have real proper ice then snow chains make sense please remember there is a speed limit related to snow chains that means maximum 50 in europe this company says only 40. so always have a deep look into the regulations and into that what the manufacturer is telling you so usually they are always a little wobbly but in that case they are quite simple to install so please read the manuals when you do that that you are always on the right side and that nothing damages your tire or your rim or your wheelhouse or the road and one more last tip always try that out at home first before you come into the situation where you actually need them So actually, you should test before you really go into driving if everything is fitting tight or if you can still um, make it tighter because otherwise you have a problem when it comes to more speed. Yeah, so now is the moment when you have to take them off because asphalt and chains are not good together. Yeah, why is it a problem to drive with chains on asphalt? Just imagine they hit the surface, destroy the surface, they heat up, so it's not at all recommended. Only if you have a layer of ice, a proper layer of ice or deep snow, then of course it makes sense to use them because then they will also create use. I hope you can use some of these tips. I will do one thing now. I will remove them and have some more fun in the snow.